Okay, cool. So uh, let's try this out. Um, <coughs> so uh, the goal here is I'm going to try and build uh, a version of Space Invaders. Okay, so I can see that there is music going on. Uh, let's kill that. All right. So uh, okay. So the goal here is to see if I can uh, build a Space Invader game. I'm still getting everything set up. So let's see if this works i'm kind of hoping that i can use the chat this should show up in the chat sending a message seeing if it comes onto the screen yeah it is actually really small but uh but that's fine uh, <clears throat> yeah so this is uh this is pretty casual uh i'm gonna try to build a version of space invaders uh trying to figure out uh what the best way to do it is and uh yeah, with the with the ultimate goal of uh, uh, the ultimate goal of being able to show this off live for a bunch of uh, for a couple of students who are learning Unreal Engine, uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, and then even I mean, I'm even thinking about having this uh, done so that uh, I can make a, a tutorial video out of it. Uh, so I'm just gonna start off by making an empty uh, blank project and call it my space in the there's so uh <coughs> the biggest problem that i've had up until now is that uh, i don't know how to spell space invaders so uh, i've had <coughs> it's been a little bit uh, some of the thumbnails are, are wrong um but uh but yeah we'll see so unreal is starting up here on the other monitor let's go over to this one here and align it like that okay cool so, uh, so let's start out. I mean, so I have an empty project here. I'm gonna start just by doing an empty level uh, and we'll just start by saving this level under, under map underscore main, just so that we have a level. So uh, the first thing that I wanted to do is, uh, let me see if I can just bring up an empty Photoshop file here. Uh, so, Space Invaders isn't a uh, isn't a very complicated game, uh, and um, 
let's see, uh, go here. So basically what I want, um, and I'm gonna be evolving uh, what I'm building uh, as, I, as I go along. So I don't really have a really strong plan. So, but I know that uh, I need to have, a, well, I have a cool brush. Uh, so I need to have the player here. And uh, the player is supposed to be able to move uh, in this direction and in this direction. So uh, it's kind of cool that I have this uh, this paintbrush. So, so the player is supposed to be able to move in these directions. Uh, the player is supposed to be able to shoot something, so uh, projectile, and. Uh, and this is the uh, and then the kind of the area where I'm uh, I'm a little bit I'm not exactly sure what the best approach is, uh, which we'll figure out is that uh, the, we have these enemies here and the enemies are going to be uh, lined up and I believe that they yeah, something like this and then the enemies themselves uh, they move from left to right, if I remember correctly. So these are enemies they move from left to right. Uh, let's just do an enemy here and do something. They also move left and right. And they also move down. This is a <clears throat> an interesting um, uh, kind of graphic. So uh, let's just start by uh, kind of identifying these things. So we're going to have a, a pawn. That's going to be our player, and let's keep this in something other than brown. Uh, make it blue. Here we go. So we need a pawn, uh, and the pawn itself uh, needs to have the logic to move. Uh, it has. Uh, we're going to do input, so we're going to do move left, and the pawn also needs to be able to do move right. <coughs> move. All right. So these are these are the controls that we need for the pawn. Uh, another thing that we have to do is we need to somehow uh, we need to somehow kind of constrain the movement, uh, which is something that we're going to run into right away. Is that uh, even if we have the pawn here, uh, we can move it to the left. It's just uh, a fairly simple thing to do. Uh, we need to make sure that the pawn doesn't go outside of the uh, outside of its bounds. So there has to be like a stopper. Uh, and there is one more <coughs> interaction, which is uh, shoot. <coughs> and I believe uh, these are the only, uh, let's make these uh, smaller, do it like here. So these are the interactions that we need the pawn to have. So the pawn here, let's change the color to be something a little bit different. So the pawn is able to shoot, move right and move left. Uh, and we need to constrain it so that it doesn't move uh, outside of our, our bounds here. And then uh, there are supposed to be some enemies. So let's just start by uh, by doing this uh, this behavior here. Let's make a Space Invaders game uh, to start with with no enemies. Um, how, how fun would that be? So uh, I like to uh, uh, kind of the basis of all Unreal games is uh, is the game mode and the uh, uh, yeah player controllers pawn and game mode and things like that. So what I want to do here is uh, I'm going to make the most simple version of this as I possibly can. So I'm not going to necessarily uh, follow any best practices uh, because the this is intended for uh, newer uh, kind of is more important for people to be able to pull this off than for the code to actually be like super super correct. So uh, I'm gonna start by making uh, game framework. Uh, so I like making a, a folder called game framework, and in here I'm going to make a new game mode. And it's gonna be a game mode base, and I'm just gonna call it BP Game uh, Space Invaders. Uh, game mode. So Space Invaders game mode. So the reason for uh, the reason why I'm making a, a game mode here is because we need another. We need a pawn. So uh, and the only way for us, or the or the way that I'm going to go for uh, making the pawn, uh, is we need to configure this level, our main map, map, or or we could do it on the project to use this. Uh, this game mode and the game mode is effectively only uh, at least in this scenario here let's open it up uh, see how this is gonna work 
uh, yeah, this is fine. Cool. So, uh, so the th uh, you can add all sorts of kind of logic to the game mode, and it's a really important piece uh, in an Unreal game. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to use these default values here, uh, and in particular, we're going to use the the default pawn, uh, which is here somewhere. Default pawn class. Uh, so this is what's going to tell us uh, what pawn to to actually spawn. So then we uh, then we make a pawn, and we just make a pawn here, and we're going to call it BP. Uh, player pawn here we go and uh, we go into this blueprint here and uh, we just give it some so the player pawn is going to be uh, the visual representation of the player itself so uh, we do player uh, we're not going to do player we're going to do sphere just so we see something uh, and then we get a sphere like this and uh, i'm just going to duplicate the sphere and i'm going to put i'm going to turn off the snapping uh, and uh, yeah, make it make it like this. So, so then now we have a now we have a uh, a player here. I mean, this is just a temp a temp, temp graphics. Uh, so uh, yeah, at least uh, to begin with. Uh, and the idea would be that uh, we would shoot the projectile out of out of here. So uh, going back into our game mode, Space Invader game mode, what we can do now is we can go and put the default pawn class into our newly created player pawn. So now we've overwritten uh, the game mode here. And then wh what we can do is we can go into this drop down here uh, that allows us to kind of do a couple of configurations. We can do a project configuration. So uh, that means that we set the uh, uh, the game mode for the whole project, or we could just do it in only this level here, the main level. So I'm going to do uh, do this, uh, the only this level here. So uh, we pick the Space Invader game mode. Here we go, and then we press play, and nothing happens. Uh, and this is because uh, this is because we are probably spawning inside of our. Uh, well, it could could be a couple of things actually. So uh, maybe it's because we don't have a light. So uh, we always need to have a light in most cases at least so i'm going to do a directional light just to make sure that uh, we see something and then uh, i drag the player in here and uh, i should see it so now i'm going to press play okay so now you can see that when i press play uh, i can see here kind of the rim of the of the player so that makes sense because um, uh, if we go here yeah, it doesn't doesn't change anything. Uh, another thing that we need is uh, we need to make sure that the player itself gets spawned in uh, in the correct place. Because I think that uh, if I don't have a, a player start here in the in the project, if I don't have that, uh, the, we're just going to start wherever our camera is uh, at the moment. So we want to make a player start. I just drag and drop this player start in here, and. I'm going to set all of the uh, the settings here to zero because I want my player to start at zero, zero, zero. And if I take a look here uh, at the light, uh, you can see that the light is shining uh, in this direction. So the player should start here and I want to be looking at the back of the player. So when I press play now, uh, I don't see anything. But uh, to check this out, I can actually pause the game. Uh, I can deattach it, which is this button here, and then I fly back a little bit. So you can see that uh, what's happening is that I'm uh, actually spawning inside of the uh, inside of my my pawn, and uh, and that's fine. That's just because my camera is being placed there. So let's just add a camera here, uh, and the camera gets added at the at the center as well. So we'll just drag the camera out, set it to maybe a minus a thousand units something like that and now when we press play uh, you can see that i have this uh, uh have the player here or or the pawn here in the in the middle so uh, 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 uh so that's kind of cool it's on a black background which is uh, a little bit annoying so let's see if we can uh, just quickly yeah so I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna go back and forth uh, i'm still figuring out what the best way to do this is so i'm just gonna make a plane here uh, rotate the plane so I'm making a, a, a simple simple background here so uh, just gonna scale the plane up move it a little bit to the back and I'm going to scale it to 500 and 500 so and we're even uh, even casting a shadow here which is fine 
but uh, but then I'm gonna make a simple material as well and call it M uh, background uh, background material there we go and we'll make the background material unlit uh, here we go yeah make it unlit constant uh, three is fine uh, and then we can give it a give it a color let's make it kind of bluish here we go so the idea uh, when I do this uh, in the class I, I like I don't want this to be kind of fully on on rails uh, I'm kind of hoping that uh, I can set it up so that people can uh, people actually just ask uh, can ask questions and, and things like that so uh, so now we have our uh, our player here uh, nothing really happens. I'm pressing the the uh, keyboard uh, shortcuts here, but uh, but nothing is happening. Um, are we are we good for the with the basics? Uh, so you can see that the the player is actually centered right now. So we can go in into the pawn and uh, we can just move the camera up a little bit. So uh, let's move it to 400. Here we go, and now when we press play, yeah, so it's at the bottom here. Uh, there are definitely ways to do this in a, like do this smarter, and uh, this would cause some problems when I resize the uh, the window, then uh, this is not gonna be in the in the center. Uh, yeah, uh, so you might wanna do this a little bit differently uh, later, but this kind of works. So let's write some code. Uh, so first what i wanted to try is i'm just going to go in here and i have all of these kind of um, uh, events kind of that don't do anything but it's just a good starting point but i want to add my controls and uh, uh, i wanted to see if i can pull off do the left uh, arrow arrow uh, left Let's see so i'm try yeah here we go okay i'm gonna uh, add the control like i'm gonna uh, hook this up to the to the uh, left uh, button yeah okay so i'm getting uh you can see that i'm getting the hello printout here uh, <coughs> mm -mm -mm. Uh, uh, yeah so i've been kind of debating if i should be should do it like this uh, or if I should add a uh, kind of normal input. Yeah, I think uh, normal input is probably better, even though this is simpler. Uh, I think this is going to be uh, it's going to be much easier to do it with the with the input. So uh, that means that we have to go into the project settings and uh, into the input itself. Let's see. Here we go. So uh, in the input itself, uh, instead of doing an action mapping, uh, we're going to do an axis mapping. Uh, and this is going to be uh, move right, I think. Uh, move right. And this is going to be the right uh, button. And the scale is going to be one. And then we are going to do yeah here uh, exactly so we do left and this is going to be minus one and i think uh, we can do it like this so maybe this is too complicated um i just want to double check if this and how this works so we print this here go here here we go all right so it's going to print zero and then uh do Okay. Yeah, I'm probably gonna. This is probably what I'm gonna go go for because uh, uh, this is the most straightforward way of doing this. So I have a move. I have move functionality, and this is gonna give me uh, an axis value. And this is how you would set it up with a controller. Uh, then I'm going to say uh, I'm going to add a simple movement. Uh, movement floating pawn movement controller here i think this is also uh the simple way of doing it uh, add input vectors 
and here we go and we're gonna split this and we are moving on the y-axis so if i'm right uh then what's gonna happen is that we're we're just gonna move and it's gonna be great so we're not moving and things are not great uh let's take a look in the log i mean there's a chance that i need to configure uh, collision and things like that so let's see if I go into my tools here debug tools ah where's the output uh, output window here okay so let's go into play and clear and it's not telling me anything um, force I mean, this should just work am i maybe not doing uh does it need to have speed or something set up we'll see okay um <clears throat> okay so it's printing the value so that's cool uh but player pawn floating pawn movement let's see max speed uh velocity is set here i mean let's just try to do force and uh, maybe it's just too small. I mean, that, that could also be the thing. So let's multiply this by a uh, hundred and see what happens now. Nope. Um, let's see what happens here. Does it ever move? Nope. This is, uh, is supposed to be here nope nothing happening um mm -mm. <coughs> this is why i decided to do this on the live stream before uh because i've never actually used the floating pawn uh movement component so uh, let's see what's happening so i have a feeling that uh, if i remember this correctly uh, this needs to have a uh, i'm gonna see if i can add a sphere collision and make it the root component and make that movable. Uh, there is a, a sphere collision here and I'm gonna make this the new root. So that means that we have, uh, there's maybe inside of it. Yep, here we go. Uh, and this is movable. Is this what's missing? No. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so I'm um, maybe using the wrong one. Mm. Move, add input vector, consume input vector. Let's see. Okay, given vector, accumulate in world space. In world space, accumulate during a frame and apply the acceleration during the moving object. Okay, so uh, let's maybe start or not start. We've been doing this for a while. Uh, just give this a uh, velocity to start with and just see if it moves like that okay it is not moving so even though i set velocity uh it's still not moving which is a little bit strange to me uh all right, so uh, I'm not gonna spend more time on this. Uh, maybe it's easier uh, not to use the, the, the movement component and uh, just do it kind of manually. So uh, I'm gonna do set actor location. Uh, I'm gonna go get actor location. It would have been kind of cool to use the, uh, uh, the floating one, but I probably should have figured out how to use it before. So here we go. Uh, the, uh, the way that this is, uh, this is being done we want to move to a new location on the on the y-axis so we take the axis value and we multiply that by uh, our movement size which is going to be 10 in this case and then we take the y position here and we add it uh, add this together and we want to keep the x and keep the the z uh, and now when we play and nothing is happening why is that the pawn 
Oh, what's going on? Okay, so it is printing, so the code is actually executing. Uh, the right, okay, so one thing. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is actually kind of cool if I'm right. So if we take a look at the player pawn here uh, and I move it, uh, <laughs> you can actually see that it is moving here. So the Y number here, but because the background is so, uh, is always the same, uh, we're just not registering the movement itself. So uh, the way we should have done this is instead of moving the actor, is uh, we should have been moving the uh, the sphere. So let's give this a, a scene component uh, and let's move uh, like let's move our graphics under the scene component and uh, we're gonna do set uh, cat world location. I mean it's fine doing this in world location and I'm gonna do take the scene do set world location uh, and that goes here that's a funny that was a funny uh, problem so but it's the type of stuff that i wanted to see beforehand so that i i don't get stumped like this uh <clears throat> when i do the actual presentation so uh what i believe is going to happen now is that now that we move yep uh we actually have the movement that we that we wanted awesome <clears throat> So uh, just to review what we did and maybe clean this up a little bit, uh, I'm gonna. We have we created a scene component that's gonna be the uh, player model, uh, and the player model uh, is probably uh, let's not have this a scene component. Let's do a, do a sphere, a sphere collision here move it out uh, out here and so be here attach move uh, yeah move these let's set this to zero and zero the camera is the one that moved so we're gonna move our graphics under here and delete this one uh, so <coughs> this is uh, what's gonna happen now is that uh, what's gonna happen now uh, is that we will uh, 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 right. Uh, we need to get our uh, player root here. Let's call this player collision root. Uh, what's going to happen now is that uh, everything should work the same. Uh, and the reason why I, I made this into a into a collision uh, collision volume is that uh, we're going to deal with we're probably going to want to do a collision later. Uh, so uh, let's see if stuff doesn't just work the same way. Yep, here we go. Uh, but then I'm going to put up these cubes in the scene. So let's scale this up. Um, here we go. like so and like so so let's see uh let's just put this at zero so minus 200 that uh, doesn't matter uh x we're gonna do 200 minus 800 minus 600 minus 800 and then we do the other one is going to be 800 and zero and zero okay so now we have a uh, uh, now we have two walls here and you can see that we are going through them uh, <laughs> kind of cool seeing uh, lumen actually working I think this is lumen or it could be uh, something else uh, <clears throat> but what I wanted to do is uh, I'm just going to make sure that these have collision so let's pick both of the walls here and take a look at the collision pre present. We're going to do block off and we take a look at the collision uh, that we have for this one here. And this one is going to say also block all. So if I am correct, uh, we're not going to get through the walls and I am not correct. Um, let's see why that is happening. 
might be because of this one here. Let's do block all for the root one as well. Um, oh, cool! I even have someone uh, someone watching the chat. That's uh, that's really fun. Uh, um, yeah, all of it and, and reverse. Uh, yeah, this is uh, actually the first time that I get a comment on something that I do live, so uh, so I'm very very uh, happy about that. And uh, you guys kind of joined when I'm uh, when I'm actually dealing with a with a problem that I uh, I'm kind of awkwardly trying to figure out. So uh, yeah, so basically trying to uh, uh, figure out why these cubes that I made aren't. Uh, colliding correctly so I've already set them to uh, to be block all collision and uh, that isn't blocking all and I'm looking at my player pawn here uh, one of the things that I did uh, before was uh, when I was testing is that I replaced the root component with uh, a, uh, a collision mesh so I'm going to reverse that and get rid of this uh, this collision here. I'm gonna attach this here. Get rid of this. So now I think I'm back to uh, where I started. Uh, let's see here. And uh, we move, and we're still not colliding. So uh, I'm gonna throw in a box collider here. So a trigger box uh, should be able to act as a collider. So I'm making a, a or is it maybe a volume? volume uh, yeah blocking volume not a not a trigger so uh, so I'm adding a, a blocking volume here uh, just to test but uh, I mean, the meshes should be able to block uh, but if they if they don't we'll, uh, we'll just see what happens so I'm just scaling them and placing them here uh, roughly in the right spot and uh, we go here and we can see here in the in the settings here that uh, this is a an invisible wall uh, I'm going to copy and paste this over here and let's see if this gets blocked. Nope. Okay. So uh, we have our player collision root here, which is a sphere. Uh, let's try and scaling that up a little bit uh, so that the, the sphere is actually bigger than the uh, than the graphics themselves. So that's going to be step number one. So now we have this uh, uh, this outline here, and uh, the player collision. This is a sphere collision, and the sphere collision. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. So I, I get I get what I'm doing wrong. So uh, it isn't. I don't think uh, because I'm doing set world location, like it's just ignoring collision. So let's uh, let's see if I turn on sweep. So if something happens there, yep, here we go. Cool. Uh, and now uh, let's see if uh, I can confirm that this was the the problem before I try to explain it because then uh, uh, if I start explaining it and uh, I'm wrong then I sound silly yeah here we go so basically uh, I had by default when you do set world location the sweep uh, is off and the sweep is actually asking uh, are you supposed to do uh, collision uh, correct yeah I, I was teleporting and, uh, and not moving uh, both of them were actually off uh, but if I turn on sweep, uh, then it actually does the collision checks and uh, then everything uh, works the way that I want it to. And if this is correct, I'll, uh, I should be able to get rid of my, my uh, hidden walls. Yeah, and then the boxes are just uh, uh, doing the collision. All right, cool. So let's make our gun here a little bit more uh, visible like so. Uh, so now we have the we have the basic kind of compo co components of the uh, uh, of the level working. I mean, you can move the main character, and if we take a look at our plan again, uh, we were going to do uh, the pawn that moves left and right, and then we we're going to do uh, a sh some shoot logic. We're going to shoot it uh, straight. So let's uh, let's start by doing that or continue doing that. Uh, so we go into the. Uh, let's go into project settings and under input. Uh, here we go. So before we added an axis mapping, and this is what you use for controllers and uh, and things like that. But uh, now we want to do an action mapping, and uh, we just press the plus. It creates a new action mapping for us, and we're going to call it shoot. And I'm going to map it to the space bar key, 
And now that I've added this, uh, I can go back into my player pawn blueprint and I can add the shoot event. And when I press the spacebar, uh, we can do print string and we do shoot. Um, and now let's try it again. And anytime that I press the space bar, uh, we shoot. Uh, so adding the adding the actual event here uh, was pretty pretty simple. But now we have to add a projectile, uh, and we are going to make a new blueprint for the projectile. So the goal is we're going to spawn a projectile uh, above the uh, kind of above our player and we're going to spawn it with uh, initial velocity so it's going to move and then if it hits something it's going to explode so uh let's go into and just make a, an actor uh, almost everything in its uh kind of the basic form of almost everything is an actor so i'm going to call it bp my pro pro projectile I like to make exclamation points when i write stuff uh, but unreal and uh, most programs don't like that uh, I'm going to add some graphics to it. I'm going to do the the sphere here. Uh, I'm going to scale the sphere down a little bit. 25, 25, and 25. Uh, I'm going to make a material. Uh, so I'm actually going to move my blueprint over outside of game framework. Uh, there's no reason for it and I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a compulsive saver so I keep saving and compiling uh, even though it doesn't make sense so I'm making a material here uh, and this material is going to be called M projectile color and then this material is going to be uh, let's just make it unlit as well uh, give it a, a color and so constant three is a as a color and we'll make it yellow 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 cool compile and then we go back into our uh projectile here and the sphere uh that's the 3d model for our uh projectile we're gonna just pick the uh projectile uh color color here so uh starting off uh the first thing that we want to do is we want to uh, we want to go back to our player pawn here and we want to pick where do we want to spawn this so if we uh, if we just start by looking at the the shoot uh, message here uh, input shoot uh, we can see that uh, we need to spawn our projectile so uh, i'm gonna call spawn actor from class so spawn actor from class is going to uh, yeah effectively spawn an actor from the class our class is called project projectile or my projectile uh, and when we press the button, I want to spawn a new uh, projectile. So it's going to ask me for a spawn transform. And the um, the simplest thing to do is just to try to get the transform. Uh, yeah, it's going to give me an error because I didn't give it a transform. Uh, it's going to give me an. Uh, it's going to ask me for an uh, a location here inside of my uh, yeah in the world. And there's a lot of noise outside that's uh, throwing me off a little bit. Uh, but, but yeah, so it's asking me for a spawn transfer. Like, where do we want to put this in the world? Uh, and the best thing to do... <laughs> bad blueprint. Let's uh, <laughs> unplug this and compile. Uh, so the best thing here is uh, we want to spawn this somewhere relative to the, uh, uh, to the player and basically want to do it above it. So let's just add a new scene component. Uh, and the scene component ba is basically all that is that it is. It's just a location. So I'm going to call it spawn location for project projectile, like so. And then I just move it a little bit above my uh, my player. And I like whole numbers, so 200. So I drag my span lo spawn location from projectile. I'm going to go get world. Uh, I'm going to do get world location uh, because I don't want to. Uh, there are cases where, uh, because that, that this is the uh, information that I'm interested in. So I split the spawn, spawn uh, transform information. I'm going to plug the spawn location for projectile uh, in here. And I'm not going to change the, the rotation or the scale. And I'm not going to change any of the, the collisions here. 
So now when we go and we play our game, when I uh, when I press play, uh, it's making oh interesting. So it's making a, a projectile, but all of them are being placed in the middle. And the reason for that is kind of cool. Uh, because the logic that we did earlier when we were moving, we're only moving uh, because we have the camera fixed uh, in this case. So we're only moving stuff that's underneath the this uh, player collision rule. And our spawn location is not under it. So we're actually not moving that. So let's just drag it under here. Uh, so this means that now that we move, uh, move our player, the, the spawn location is going to move as well. And now we have a, a cool little painting game of projectiles that don't do anything or don't move. Uh, and it's been bothering me a little bit uh, how big my player is. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to say scale it down to 25% of what you were and scale this one here down to 25% of what you were. And we put this in here and uh, the collision itself. Ah, it's going to scale all, all at once. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Totally, totally uh, worthwhile uh, usage of my of our time. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, so now uh, our player is a little bit smaller uh, and it makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so uh, we are spawning, spawning a projectile and uh, our game is still pretty simple so uh we just find we have to find our projectile so it's here bp my projectile uh <clears throat> basically uh unreal provides us with a component called uh projectile movement which i am hoping i can get get to work i just added the projectile component in here and when the uh projectile spawns i want the initial speed to be 50 100 and i want the velocity so there's a whole bunch of settings here but what i can do is i can set the initial speed and then i can set the velocity and the velocity is effectively just the direction and uh, instead of doing positive x i'm going to do positive z that's up and uh, let's see if this works so yeah so it's kind of working uh, there is some uh, there is gravity going on so all of my projectiles are uh, falling to the uh, to the floor not what I wanted but uh, uh, interesting uh, interestingly happening so uh, let's see if we can turn off gravity uh, well I mean first off <laughs> inverse space invader yeah exactly I mean it's one of these things where maybe this is just a, maybe this is just a cooler way of doing it maybe uh i can um if i just take my camera here and uh i move the camera down and i'm gonna move my player start up so maybe yeah so here i'm shooting uh, i'm actually just shooting down inverse space invader <laughs> it's just uh <coughs> it's features not bugs <laughs> uh let's see here we go and let's undo things a bit uh yeah this is probably go, supposed to go down <laughs> yeah no it's uh it's true like so many game features are, are accident and ac accidents and uh being able to kind of act on them is i think the magic of, of uh, like a lot of the magic of game development it's uh if you find something that's really working do you have the environment to uh uh to kind of execute on it and, and in a lot of cases uh, and a lot of studios don't uh so i'm gonna go back here um yeah i mean being able to just yeah if you find something something cool and spin it out into a uh, into a project or integrate it into the game i guess it's uh there's a lot of magic to it uh, so let's see why the projectile isn't going fast enough so uh, start by just increasing the speed so if we look at this uh I think this is I'm not even I'm not even going to try to guess what the the number here is. So uh now we are shooting but uh interestingly enough things are now moving into the background uh which I'm not 100% sure why is happening because we set the uh when we spawned our 
uh, object here. Let's see, we go into the projectile, we're setting the initial speed to 100. And we are, ah, here we go. We can, we can see that. So I forgot to remove the, yeah, exactly. So maybe uh, maybe the end, end result of this is gonna be like taking space invaders into the, uh, into the third dimension and you're shooting forward, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, <clears throat> maybe that's something that, uh, that I yeah, should be doing. Uh, uh, there was a game uh yeah having physics involved is uh is also like another thing that's that's really really uh fun to do especially when you're starting out because physics can make these like really cool uh kind of emergent gameplay gameplay things uh so but i am going to turn off the velocity for now uh and i'm just going to shoot straight up and uh <laughs> yeah i think this is uh, if the invaders move in the same line as a bullet yeah so i think this is what they call feature creeping <laughs> i i'm here to make a simple <laughs> space invaders game and uh no i just need to need someone to say uh how uh how about we add it at multiplayer <laughs> um but i'm gonna disable the gravity for now and uh search gravity scales <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah just turn on the multiplayer uh, flag and then just do the uh, make pretty slider and then we just ship, it's easy. <laughs> so, uh, so here we go, we have constant speed now and we're shooting, uh, shooting the, uh, the bullet straight up. Uh, one interesting thing here uh, that you'll notice is that uh, if I press play, uh, the projectile is going to fly infinitely uh, up and this is going to cause problems uh, for long game sessions. So it's very easy just to go in here in our projectile, go into the class settings and uh, go and add a lifetime. And lifetime is under class defaults. So uh, just give it a two, let's say a five second lifespan. Then you can be pretty sure it's off screen. So now I can shoot them as much as I want and uh, uh, they're gonna be self uh, cleaned up after, uh, uh, yeah, they're gonna be cleaned up after five seconds. Cool. So uh, let's add an enemy. Um, <clears throat> and again, we just make an actor here. Uh, let's go and do an actor. This is gonna be enemy, 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 enemy. Yep, that's, that's correct. And again, we're just going to make some default graphics. I'm gonna do cube. And I'm going to go in and do uh, material, and the material is going to be called M underscore enemy. And again, I'm going to make it unlit. Uh, going to do unlit. I'm going to do a constant three. Plug it in here, and we're going to make it red because that's the. This is the. This is the color of enemies kind of pinkish, reddish. And again, we go into our enemy here, uh, pick the cube, go and pick the enemy uh, color. And now let's just place our enemy into the world and uh, make sure that it's centered. So it's in the center of the world and then uh, just keep it here and see what happens. So I'm gonna shoot and our projectile just goes through the through the enemy, which totally makes sense. Uh, first, we wanna take a look at the, uh, we're gonna make this, um, we're gonna make a collision profile or a collision box around the, uh, around our enemy because it's a box. So we could do a sphere. So now I have made a box here and I should be able to replace the root here with the box. And uh, now I'm just gonna do it like this. And I'm going to say, this is supposed to uh, overlap all dynamic. Um, and then we are going to go into our projectile. Uh, and the projectile is here. And we're going to see, uh, we don't have uh, have any collision here. So we'll just add a sphere collision to this here. And I'm going to make this, uh, let's see, projectile, the projectile movement component is moving the root. So this should be fine. 
we're going to make this smaller so that it's the similar size as the uh, uh, as our projectile and then I'm going to go I'm picking the uh, the sphere collision here and I am going to uh, 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 I'm going to override the on component begin overlap event here which means that any time that something overlaps the uh, the projectile uh, we're going to react to it so I picked my uh, collision sphere and I went into the list of events that are available and I picked the uh, component uh, begin overlap event here so uh, let's just start by printing and seeing if this works so I'm not going to plug anything else and I'm just going to see if uh, if this works so we print uh, so I'm getting three hellos here which means that uh, I'm overlapping a bunch of things uh, which is not good <coughs> but uh, we have a way of figuring out what we're overlapping so we'll go back into our projectile here and we want to print the other actor here so we're going to figure out this is going to let us know which actors are actually being overlapped and i'm going to set my print string to be on the screen for 20 seconds so that i can actually read it so we go here and here and we place it here and when i print it so first off it's printing it's overlapping my projectile uh, so it's overlapping itself interestingly enough uh, <clears throat> but it's then it's printing the enemy it's overlapping the enemy twice so let's fix the enemy first so uh, first our enemy here has a cube and the cube itself is set to uh, block all dynamics so we're going to turn off the collision for the cube itself we could have just overlapped the actual 3d mesh but this gives us a lot more control uh, if we wanted to make it so that the hitbox is a little bit bigger or smaller or, or something like that uh, but this explains why we're getting the two uh, uh, the two ones and then now when we print we should only get the projectile and then we get the enemy once so uh, for this tutorial I'm not going to dig in why it's colliding with itself uh, maybe I'll just check it really quickly yeah it's probably the same problem so the sphere model itself is probably colliding with uh, uh, yeah the sphere model itself is probably uh, colliding with it so yeah here we go so uh, now that I now I turned off the collision for all of my uh, all of the uh, kind of things that I don't want to collide with uh, and what this means is that I can uh, I can now I'm not gonna say safely but I can go into my projectile and anything that my projectile hits here anything that it uh, over uh, collides with or overlaps uh, we're gonna take the actor that it overlaps with and we're going to destroy it destroy actor so now that we play we press play and we destroy the actor and uh, you can see that uh, the projectile itself kind of keeps going if the projectile itself hits something uh, we are also going to then just destroy actor ourselves so uh, this looks may look a little bit strange but uh, what's happening here is that when we overlap with something we destroy the thing that we were overlapping with and then we uh, uh, we destroy ourselves here we go and now now we have the absolute basics for a space invaders game uh, i'm just going to duplicate them uh, well uh, there's no movement here yet uh, <laughs> uh, so it's ready for ready for prime time uh, so let's uh, just make this a little bit uh, so now i'm just duplicating them and moving them around a little bit so something like this and this and here we go kind of cool so now i have the the basics of a game i can move left and right i can shoot uh it's destroying my enemies and the projectiles uh yeah, and things are actually kind of working so uh so yeah i think this is going to uh like all of a set let's just ship it it's fine works i've uh this uh, <laughs> spent two more days on menus yeah uh i think uh for at least as a, an introduction to how to uh, how to make up game from from scratch i'm probably going to stop it here i'm probably going to do this live stream again in a couple of a uh, couple of days just run through this again 
uh, do this a little bit a little bit better and maybe do menus and scores and uh, and a game loop and things like that but uh, other than that I, I'm very uh, appreciative of uh, people coming and, and watching and uh, even having some comments uh, really happy about that uh, but uh, but yeah uh, thanks a lot and uh, yeah it was fun <laughs>